Yo, what's going on, my buddy? This is Mystical. Today, I'm bringing you Monk Monday number 107. Thank you so much for anyone who submits their gameplay. For those of you who don't know what this is, you send any gameplay you have to this email right here, and I critique it, I review it, I do anything to help you improve at the game. I think the best way, or one of the best ways to improve at in PvP and PvE is to have your gameplay recorded and you watch over it, or if somebody else can watch over it, uh, look over it, then they can too. And I take anything. I take PvP, I take PvE, Mistweaver, Windwalker, it doesn't matter. I've done RBGs, 2s, 3s, Mythic Plus. I haven't done a raid yet, but if anyone has any any gameplay at all that's Monk-related, please send it to me. Please do. And today we have Exuper June uh, watches the stream. He's a super nice guy. And he sent in gameplay saying, hey, Mr. Huge fan, you're streaming YouTube. I've learned so much from watching you over the years. Thanks for the great content. I appreciate you watching it. I'm glad. I, I really am. Um, he actually did a Monk Monday critique. I do remember in 2019. I do remember doing one for you. I think it was BFA. I'm not sure if you're allowed submissions of people who have already critiqued. I would I would critique the same person 30 times in a row if that was the only one that submitted. So if you do want to submit your gameplay again, please, like, I, I don't care. I love these are my favorite types of videos. Um, we'll do the 2100 MMR for future Monk Monday. Only two or three games are actual losses. The first game is a win, but I want I would love your critique anyway, as I'm sure there's still plenty I could have done better. And B, I think you'll have some particularly unique insight into that game. I'm not sure what that means yet, but okay. Um, FYI, since I'm not sure if it's obvious in the videos on Venthyr, Venthyr is good. I like Venthyr. I mean, in twos, it's okay. It's I think it's pretty similar to to Necrolord, but in threes, I don't think Venthyr is better. All three games are so on Draven. I swap between that and Nausea, depending on the comp. And my Lego Slot of Focus and Unity. Thanks, Yo, Thank you so much, man. Um, yeah, let's get into it. I actually, you know what's funny is I actually don't use either. I don't use Draven or Nausea for either of those Soulbinds. I use Theodore for the extra versatility. So it looks like we're playing Ring of Peace, Miss Weaver, Fury Warrior, Peace Weaver, Eminence, Disarm is pretty good. I um you could draw Peace Weaver, in my opinion. So the reason I run Peace Weaver versus Fury Warriors is if they play with like a holy priest or a disc priest, because they have Boon, which is a Kyrian spell that does a ton of damage. So uh, that's why I run Peace Weaver versus Fury Warriors versus Miss Weaver Fury. You could probably drop Peace Weaver and go with um Chrysalis. Even Zen Focus T if you don't want to get kicked. So, one of those is good. Um, other than that, everything looks fine. Yep. So, playing uh, Miss Weaver Demon Hunter. Oh, yeah. This is actually me and my ult. Holy cow. This was from a minute. This was a minute ago. This was what, last month? Holy cow. Okay. Let's see what we got here. Oh, yeah. This was with Roxy, too. All right, so you just port instantly, which is fine. Uh, Conqueror's banner gets stopped with the ROP. He ring, he, uh, what should we call it? He, uh, Blade Storms right through it, which is really annoying. Uh, Mana T, and we're just getting we're just getting hot out, which is perfectly fine. And I don't know if we have mobility or not. Out, your Demon Hunter is, I think, was hitting me most of the game, but swap it over to you now. I mean, we're doing a pretty good job. In cap there, it's gonna get broken. I mean. It's fair if you're playing the if you it, that in cap is good if you're playing lingering numbness but what you can do so now that you know he just uses Zerka rage the next time you have in cap he's not gonna have it so if the warrior is still hitting you and you in cap like you see how you're tracking right here 55 second cooldown now that you know he doesn't have it the next in cap is actually gonna land so keep that in mind um, yeah it looks like. Uh, we're just, I, I think it's just like a 1v1 both ways. No, no, you Demon Hunter's coming to help right now. Uh, Crackling J Lightning on you from me. I think Demon Hunter's hitting me now. I'm pretty sure, yeah, I remember being told that like your Demon Hunter plays like High Master or something. I go for an in-cap on him. You get a nice drop on the Warrior there because I don't think he has Blades from to get through it. And we're doing a pretty good job. Roll, there's full in-cap, which isn't perfect. Great for kiting. And uh, we're doing a pretty good job right now, I would say. Blade Storm. So now, you know, now next, again, next ROP won't have it. Um, I don't know if, do you have renewing, where are your buffs? Oh, is this us? Okay, we're renewing this up. Okay, this is good. Nice, verify, good. Reset your port. Perfect. No, I would say overall we're doing a really good job. Oh, this sounds, I was like, what does that sound? No, overall we're doing a really good job of, uh, of just staying alive. Fury Warriors are really annoying to deal with, especially when, with all their tools that they have, so... 
The warrior has no trinket still. Uh, he's going to have Zerker Rage for your next in cap. So you're probably going to need help from your Demon Hunter, maybe. If he actually uh, connects. Roll on to his... Um, Rops the Rop. <sighs> Insane Rop there. No. <laughs> no, that Rop wasn't that good for me. I should have saved it for the Demon Hunter. Because right now I'm trying to do damage and like keep you guys... Not keep myself alive. Uh, this is warrior cooldowns here, so if we have disarm, it'd be really nice. I see we have disarm in five seconds, which is fine. Um, I, I'm gonna be honest on this map. I don't really like going from um, what is what are these called? Like the wall to wall. I don't like that this much. What you should do, there's there's two different things you can do on this map. Uh, personally, my favorite, and you see me doing it in this game, is I like to go from pillar to pillar because the port distance is exactly perfect. You can put your port behind one pillar, go to the other pillar, and you can just keep porting back, which is what you see me doing a lot. Um, if, let's just say, you don't want to push in and do that, what you can do is you can use the pillar and go from pillar to this, like, um, like wall, and just keep doing that. I think it's really... The kiting from here to the other one is just not good. It, it's not... Because you keep getting... You roll away, which is perfect, and then the, the warrior instantly connects back onto you. Instantly. And that's it's, it's happening again. So we port, which is good, and then he's able to connect right back. You're not even at, you're not even at full health, and he's just able. Oh, and I died. That's unfortunate. Rest in peace, my poor little, my poor little. Where did I die? Oh yeah, my left cocoon goes away in exactly three, two seconds. <laughs> I think this was was this before the cocoon buff. I feel like it was. Um, but yeah, that that's the only problem on this map. Like good port, but. It's just not far away. Like you should be able to get to full health by the time someone gets to you when you port. So just keep that in mind. Try to go pillar to pillar, or you know, if you don't want to, you can go from pillar to like this wall over here, and you keep going back and forth, back and forth. Anything to create more LOS other than like a straight line for the warrior, other than he just leap and get to you, or he just like waddle his way to get to you. Uh, other than that, though, healing was fine. Rops were good. Uh, in caps were really good too because just keeping track of the Zerker rage is really important. And no, I think I think overall no, that was that was a good game. So we have. Feral Resto Druid? Fer no, Feral Rep Pally. Oh my god. Um, this arm might be good versus Rep Pally. I think you're better off playing Peace Weaver, Eminence, this arm, or probably, probably those three. I think that's just good, but we'll see. Could run Zen Focus D in case they try to run at you. Seraphim is active, so he's just trying to do damage right now. Spinning crank to try to get the feral out, which is fine. Blur from your demon hunter instantly, which is good. We're stacked on top of a port, so be careful. That's like sweep from the feral druid. So it, just be careful because yeah, obviously they're trying to all in on you. And we're yeah, we're on our port. Okay. No, I think we're good. Nice in cap. Feral has no trinket. We're doing a great job. No, yeah, we're up there. Chasing after the rep pally. Maybe I mean, yeah, rep's probably easier to kill. Yeah, it's probably easier to kill. I don't know if we have port. So we're a little scared right now. We don't have Revival or Fort Brew. As long as we have Trinket Cocoon, we should be okay. But we have Renewing Mist. Do we have Renewing Mist on ourselves? Yeah, we do. Okay. Yeah, we're looking pretty good right now. Um, we just need to connect. In twos, damage is the only thing that matters. So if your Demon Hunter can't hit the Rep Pally, just hit the Feral Druid. Looks like the Feral is just going to try to spam you. Now's a really good time to go for CC on the Druid. Nice. Okay, he opens on you. Goes port the cyclone, which is awesome. Now they can go you. So just you need to be a little bit more careful now because now they can hit you, which is the downside of like our port <laughs> is like you avoid it for CC, but now they can they can definitely kill you if they wanted to. That's cocoon from us uh, and diffuse magic. So I mean, I think you had to, and your demon hunter's blur is gonna be down soon. Uh, I don't think we got pally bubble though, didn't we? Uh, if we can get, if we, nice, DR in cap is, is fine, I think. Careful though. Yep. I don't think you're going to live this. Yeah. That's a, that's tough because you use your mobility. It sucks because you use your mobility to avoid a cyclone and then you just get punished for it. I think, uh, first of all, I would not use these stairs. I think are the worst place to be. I actually think it's awful uh, playing up top. You should have your port up top for sure. But but have your DPS play bottom, and if they try to hit you, just jump down, port up, and then roll. So, what I mean is, like, 
playing up here is just it, it, it you, you can't line anything right like it's just an open it's just an open area they just can free hit whoever they want as opposed to down below where your demon hunter can kite if you're in cc you can kite a lot easier if you're in trouble um so and then you could like port from one side to the other which is really good too so i think this is just a positioning game because i think you got every cooldown that they had um but make sure but so i would recommend just playing bottom here not up top here because it happens where your demon hunter now gets swapped too and you know you need to like go up now and push into this team and you don't want to do that unless your demon hunter unless you play way over here and then your demon hunter plays on the stairs that way you, you far away and you can heal from far away um i would not recommend because then we push in and then we just instantly die so that's the only thing I would recommend is positioning on this map, this map. I think overall you rotate your cooldowns fine, and uh, it was just unfortunate. Actually, we had Zen Focus T here. Now that I see it, we have we have Zen Focus T. Probably we also have revival in, right now, so we have cooldowns. We just got kicked, so that's another thing. I have that problem too. You know, sometimes I don't want to play press Zen Focus T, even though I know I should. So you have Zen Focus T and revival here. Um, but most importantly, it's just positioning. I would play it down, keep your port like kind of on the side of the pillar, just to make it easier to kite. Because they're really, you can't, Feral Druids are really hard to kite. Um, Holy Priest, Fury Warrior. This is going to be a good one. Um, Disarm is really good. Oh, we're playing Resonator. Okay. Um, Disarm is really good versus Fury Warrior. Probably play Healing Elixirs just because I don't have much. To, and I would probably play, what else did you play? Let me see. Peace Weaver, Disarm, Eminence. Yeah. I actually don't play Eminence versus Fury Warriors because they don't play, they don't have stun most of the time. They play Impending Victory, which is their Storm Bolt. Um, so most of the time, I just drop Eminence for like Chrysalis. And we're probably going to start doing that too once the uh, Chrysalis change goes through. <laughs> so yeah, just keep that in mind. Sometimes they just play Impending Victory and you don't have to. You don't, there's no reason for eminence, but I guess the shorter cooldown on port is nice too. But you just, if you position far enough away, they really struggle to get to you. All right. If you're a warrior, holy priest. I feel like your kill target is, if you can, honestly, if your demon hunter can hit the holy priest and cleave both of them, that's probably ideal. Um, like what the strategy should be is if the warrior is hitting your demon hunter, have your demon hunter hit the priest because then your your demon hunter can hit the warrior and the priest at the same time. If the warrior is hitting you, I think the the demon hunter just stays on the priest or the the, 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 the uh, warrior. Their in cap is fine. Like sweep there is good. Warrior's taking a lot of damage. This is recklessness. So if you have disarm, I would probably press it just because. It's a lot of damage. Um, I know it's blur and meta. Disarm, potentially. Nice. Oh, your demon hunter gets disarmed. And that's also GS2 on your demon hunter. So this is this is looking pretty good for you. Um, you have Renewing Mist and Velpy Mist on your demon hunter. Good. There's just times like this where if you just want to cocoon, you can. Um, or at least you're going to be able to when, uh, when the new changes happen. Because you just want to be able to rotate your cooldowns a little bit better. Seg now. Oh, it actually breaks it. Oh, we're changing. No, no, we're changing Cocoon. Okay. We're not playing Crystal. Sorry. I'll keep that in mind. Disarm on the Fury Warrior is good. Oh, disarming it is also really good for dropping the 8 stacks if they have the MS. So, <clears throat> if you see that they have, like, close to 8 stacks or they have 8 stacks, you could use Disarm and it'll prevent them from, like, keeping those stacks, which is really helpful because that MS is crazy. That's Blur from your Demon Hunter, which is good. We keep renewing Mist on him. Stormbolt. Oh, he is playing Stormbolt. So, he's not playing Impendent Victory, which is good for you guys. Blur. I would still recommend it probably hitting the Holy Priest just because you get cleave. Oh. No. All right. I thought we were going to. Uh, Blade Storm. It's a Recklessness proc, so you're just going to be doing some damage. Incap here. I actually play Song of Chi-Gi versus this comp. Yeah. I, I play Song of Chi-Gi for Incap Song. Darkness from your Demon Hunter. Oh, my God. Uh, Mind Games. It gets killed, man. Huh. I, I honestly... Oh, hello. I don't even see that. I, I actually think that you need to pressure the priest a lot more just because he, the priest just free casting heal, which is keeping his mana up and he's just smiting to get his 
his chastise back. Also, one thing is right here. Where is it? Where is it? Where are you? Right here. I think it's after the sphere. Where the warrior uses... Uh, where is it? Conqueror's banners up and everything. I think he gets a lot of pressure. I don't even know when we disarm, actually. Let me see when we disarm. Are we playing disarm? I don't see disarm. I thought I saw disarm here in one of the last games. But I don't see disarm. Hmm. I don't know if we're playing this time or not, but one of the best times to do it would be like, rip, you know, after this blade storm probably, or like a little bit before it. And then also these situations right here, I know there's no more cooldowns left, but it's twos. The game's gonna go on for a long time. Your demon hunter's gonna have blur back really soon. You could just press life cocoon and that way you don't have to waste trinket. Um, that's what I tend to do, especially with the apotheosis up. So when holy priests use apotheosis they get their chastise back which is really annoying so that means even though you got chastised like i don't know 20 to 30 seconds ago you can get chastised again so if i see mind games or if i see like you know him pushing in i'd probably just go for a cocoon here especially since your teammate is at like 50 percent health so that's the only thing i would say i don't think anything anything else really was wrong this game because i feel like we're doing fine i think there needs to be a little bit more pressure on the priest because it, you could just do so much more damage. Um, your demon hunter, I don't know if he's doing like some kind of single target build. I don't know. But if you're if the warrior is hitting your demon hunter, just hit the priest. Um, that way you hit both at the same time. Um, they'll get cleaved down way faster. And, and the priest will probably freak out and make a mistake. So <clears throat> keep that in mind. We have hots here though, which I'm, I'm actually... Maybe we go for... Oh, we go for an in-cap here, but I don't think it's... Well, no, I don't think it's that big a deal. Yeah, maybe in-cap. We try to go for a leg sweep. And our, and our demon hunter is at like 50%. Uh, yeah, definitely focus on healing uh, for sure. Usually, like, if I ever want to go for CC and be a little bit aggressive, I'll actually just cocoon. I know you don't have it. But, like, if I'm ever in this situation, I normally just cocoon my DPS on the off chance that they do try to trinket my CC and then CC me. That's normally what I'll do. But I would say, most importantly, make sure you keep your DPS healthy before going in for crowd control. Because it's like a few globals where, you know, you know you're not healing. So... Uh, a little bit, I mean, darkness could have come out sooner, but we have revival too. It's like right there. I mean, honestly, you're like right there. Um, we also have Yulon too. Oh, there's disarm. I see disarm now. Where is it? Okay, no, we, uh, when do we disarm? Disarm now? Oh, we're back. Okay, that's good disarm. That's good disarm. That's why it's for regeneration, so we actually gotta look at the pressure. Yeah, no, that was good. Fallen Monk too, or using your Fallen Order there is really good. Um, it's just unfortunate. Actually, almost if Touch of Death worked and you were close, you could have probably gonna got it. But overall, I think this game wasn't that bad. You got Hots, you were healing fine. It's just unfortunate that like we didn't get the Cocoon and then we had to Trinket. It. it it sucks, and then the Darkness wasn't good enough. So uh, overall, though, man, the, the games were good. The games were good. This first one was really good. Really good kiting. Um, Really good job with incapping with rec um, with uh, Zerker Rage, so that you know every other one you can you can get the, they get the full CC. Great robs, great kiting. Try to use the pillar, pillar like pillar the pillar or like pillar to like these like boards, just because it, it makes it way more difficult for me to get to you. This one was just positioning. I think you would have won if you guys played bottom, um, just because it's easier for you to kite. And then the stairs are really awkward. It, I actually get really annoyed when my teammates like go up on the stairs because if I have to push in, I can easily get swapped too. So keep that in mind. I don't think um, the stairs are up top are worth it. Maybe put your port up here, but outside of that, don't play up top. And then this last one, there really were any mistakes. Um, the only one was pre-cocooning ago, and that's just how it is sometimes when we play Mistweaver. <laughs> I mean, and then your Demon Hunter barely didn't live your until you like you had revival. It was literally your, your six percent. It's literally right there, like that second you get out of cc so I, I you're so close to living this game was fine um yeah no i, I don't have any problem maybe before cc you could have went for a disarm that, that's probably what i i would have personally done if you have oh you don't even have disarm all right never mind yeah the only thing you could have done is if you had life cocoon like pre-life cocoon and then go go for cc but you can't predict the trinket on the encampment to fear so yeah, just make sure when you're going for CC, your teammates are healthy because this happens and it's really annoying when it does. Trust me. I've been there a few times. So, yeah, hopefully this was helpful for you. Hopefully helpful for anybody that's watching. I appreciate anyone that watches these and that's pretty much it for me. I hope everyone's a fantastic rest of your day. Hope you enjoyed the video. I'll see you later.